Hello everyone, Cookies here with turn 48 of EA Vanheim in the Noob Orange Lobby. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded, so I'm a few turns behind, but we can uh, work on catching up. So we, get, we see the research push uh, making some progress. We got some Evo Blood Magic and Thaumaturgy Magic all researched. This is part of my um, ever-growing list, or ever-growing attempt to try and pile up as much magic as possible so that I can actually fight the fear wolves combined with wailing winds and maybe foul vapors and maybe blood rain that Helheim can do. So... That's kind of the plan there. We've got a few storm demons. And we've also got a battle in Ubar. So let's go ahead and see how Abyssia is. This might be a storming. Let's see how their storming went. Yep. So we've got a long list, long line of uh, Abyssian sacreds. And then. A few warlocks with some pearls. A thug with uh, it's a anti ubar kit. The salt to stun them. Uh, Moonblade to deal two times damage. Burning pearl to help with attack. Yep, also to stun. This is a prophet. Ooh, I would have made this guy the thug. 27 HP. Over this guy with the chest wound. Yeah. Yeah, I would have made the prophet the thug. Um, this guy's a good thug, though. He's looking like he's in pretty good shape. 19 HP. Uh, still no items on any of the Ubar stuff. The player is basically just... Um, I forget if it was now or in a turn or two, but they basically start staling every single turn. So these turns are taking forever. So I'm not going to have to catch up quite as much as you would think for two weeks at supposedly one turn a day. Uh, we have a cross brand thug and a copper plate conjurer. I probably just picked it up. It never got reassigned. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. Bunch of mages at the back with storm power. Or all the storms that are being casted. And mist form. We have this E3 warrior at the front. And this lightning's uh, taking its toll. How much HP does a burning one have? 23? Uh, we see the attack closest script again, which is not my favorite script. There are bajillions of these wall defenders. Honestly though, they have so much armor, I just ignore the archers and run to the back. So once you, if you can kill all the mages and the god, like, it doesn't matter. Some of them are making it up, but a lot of them are getting killed almost as soon as they walk up. Gosh, this is like a movie where the enemies are just running up one at a time to get killed by the hero. Oof. Alright, so my hopes of a sacred laden ally that also has Berserk to help me kill Helheim are definitely getting dashed here. So, how many does he lose? 53 plus a warlord and all three warlocks. So... Only killed an Efreet warrior, five, two gen warriors, and five archers. 
So killing the PD doesn't really do anything for you. You need to be killing these mages at the back that are doing all the killing. With 45 from the Shaitan. So that's unfortunate. Additionally, uh, the wolves are hungry in Millgate. That's nice. And we got some gems. So let's see how the wolves did. Alright, the wolves are gonna get. They're just gonna die. But... Okay. Uh, we found an Abyssia assassin. Not. I thought about saying something about this, but decided against it. I hadn't actually been hit with an assassination attempt, so I assumed it was a fancy scout, but when you uh, put an assassin on my research park, I start, um, the mind starts racing with accusations. Let me just put it that way. And... See, we bought a bunch of the mercenaries. So we've just been doing min bids on all these mercenaries. I think I did the math, and I think it it's expensive upkeep, but it's not, like, out of this world when, after the first bid. So, like, the, this guy, I think... What is that? It's, like, just over three, three gold a turn? Or, no, 40 gold for three turns. So it's, like, 11 gold a turn. I can't do math. 12 yeah just over 12 gold a turn and then you know so stuff like that um i think the giver was nine gold a turn so i think that works out to like a reasonable yearly upkeep that you would pay for an indie mage like that so i'm content generally content to keep paying them as long as it's min bids and they're giving me a little bit more magic diversity, and they're helping me make some items, like a starshine skull cap, stuff like that. Uh, we have our crystal gear forger from that guy with the earth, astral random. And right now we're just kind of building up and researching. So we're recruiting, you know, getting a lot of Jarls. Um, Trying to get my dominion spread. Uh, trying to ramp up blood hunting. Get more storm demons. The storm demons are going to be great. They'll hang around a little bit longer under wailing winds. So the more of them, the better. Also building more thug kits. Uh, continuing to expand the blood economy and the research economy. It, I'll be alternating over turns. And yeah, so Storm Demon, Rings of the Warrior, Saint Sanguine Dowsing Rods, just a lot of forging. Um, you can see a lot of the kits are out and assigned right now, but at some point soon I'm going to rein in a lot of those kits. So I have a, a stockpile, and then when we go to war, We'll be able to equip an army of thugs with these kits. They'll just be able to roll out. So that's kind of the idea there. Uh, in terms of research, going after Thumb 5, let's get Soul Slay Gateway. My Pretender is able to cast Gateway. So if I build up a big army on my cap, I can do a surprise gateway. Um, and then what else? We've got uh, Growing Fury is the other big reason to come down to Thumb 5. Gift of Reason is also nice, but Growing Fury. If uh, um, So the idea was, in the face of Wailing Wind, I do Growing Fury... And then bloodletting. 
and maybe I'll be able to ping a bunch of my guys and they'll stay in the fight. So that's kind of the idea there. So Growing Fury, Bloodletting, and even my thugs should hopefully stay in at that point too. And we've got um, Enchantment 5 coming up. Uh, so that'll enable Foul Vapor's Traps, Pale Riders, which don't care about morale, but they'll die in droves, Word of Skeletons, which is nice. Uh, Eyes of God could... Eh, I've got so many scouts, I don't really need that. Um, Quagmire might be okay, but maybe Thunder Ward... But generally speaking, it's for Foul Vapors. And then Evo 7 gives me access to Rain of Stones, Murdering Winter, which is something my Pretender can do, and my Sea Kings, and Stygian Rains, which is something I think I can get access to. I think this will be a somewhat nice surprise. So his bless does not have magic weapons. I think there's just like poison weapons. So there's like magic damage on it. But the weapons themselves are not magical. So if I put invulnerability 15, paint that over the battlefield. My Van Heers can hit through that. I think his cab will struggle to hit through that. And then my thugs will be able to hit through that while they're protected by mist form. So that's kind of the idea here. Cloud of Death, really good. Wind of Death, especially if I cast this over a bunch of the corpse constructs. So while the corpse constructs are dying, his units can be dying to Cloud of Death. And then uh, Wind of Death, which I can really only cast via Communion with a Death Random Vanadrot. But... Um, or I can get maybe a stronger death mage and give them crystal gear. But it, it would still be via communion. But Wind of Death would also be... It would be okay. Um, his troops have a lot of MR, so I don't think it would be that good. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the plan there. Uh, I think Stygian Reigns is going to be really neat. Um... Let's see, where was my... This guy can't. This guy. So I'm kind of specking this guy up to be a Stygian Reigns caster potentially someday, maybe. Um, I can also get a... Is it cast streams from Hades and you get a Water 3 Death 3 mage who can also do it. So that's kind of the plan there. Um, with this defeat, I'm really worried about <laughs> Abyssia's ability to hold up, um, especially protecting these two unforted thrones from this Helheim army. So Abyssia and I are both in the position where we need three thrones to win, but Helheim only needs two because they have a three-pointer. So if they're able to get this one and this one, they would win. Which means uh, Abyssia's attrition on Ubar means uh, I need to position something. So not only do I have to defend, try and defend my three thrones, so here, here, and here, but I potentially also need to defend Abyssia's throne. So maybe I could put together some sort of like throne rush plan if I had uh, Alt 8, which um, I'll start thinking about it at some point but alt 8 is the wizard's tower so what you would do in this case is i'm not even sure where you could stand to cast it maybe get like a range booster cast it from here you'd wizard tower this one and potentially even this one if, like i could conceivably save enough enough earth gems to do this in like five turns so you wizard tower both of these, magic phase onto both of them, and crack this throne, 
in one turn. I'd have to break nap and ruin my reputation to do it, which it might be worth it, but I'm enjoying this game, so I kind of don't really want to throw in rush. But then um, gateway like a bunch of eagles or something in to hold off a siege and take this throne and that would be a w off of abyssia so that, that would be kind of the idea there again i need alt eight and 100 earth gems so that'd be like a five turn plan i'd have to put together a like a sneaky large army here with maybe a bunch of eagles or something and uh run those eagles maybe on like a yarl here with a bunch of eagles who are doing blood hunting hunting patrolling um you could i don't think you can sail them so i actually don't think that'll work i think you can only sail up to size three yeah okay so i'd probably have to actually position them maybe maybe i can position eagles here and get there but you'd try to one turn crack this and then take it and then cap it but i only have one holy three as well so i would need to give a water booster to this guy and get a couple of bishop fish put a shade mail on him which i've got one shade mail so anyways this is all stuff i could do uh speaking from the future and maybe i could still do it i don't know it might be worth considering it would be yeah. It would definitely turn Abyssia from a potential ally into an enemy, but maybe that would be worth it. I don't know. Um, I know Ubar would be a fan of me doing that. And... Let's see. So yeah, other than that, that's what we're researching. We're gathering up troops recruiting is more and more sacreds especially since they trade like really poorly with the Helheim sacreds so that's kind of the idea there and uh yeah i'll go ahead and see you in the next one later